There is one giant in this hydroelectric power plant, the Kaplan turbine. Kaplan turbines are the largest of all the hydro turbines. This Kaplan turbine runner is still. Can you predict what will happen if the water flows over the blades? Will it rotate? You'll be able to give a clear answer if you can see the cross section of the blade. It's interesting to note that each cross section of the blade is an airfoil. When there is a flow around the airfoil, lift force will be produced as shown. This means that on our Kaplan turbine blade, at every cross section, lift force will be produced. These forces will spin the turbine as shown. This is how the giant Kaplan turbines work. At the top of the turbine, the generator runner is connected and electricity is produced. Kaplan turbines are best suited to low head, high flow rate situations. You can see how water from the dam flows through the penstock and finally reaches the runner of the turbine. What's the purpose of this beautiful spiral casing? Why the casing is always spiral in shape? Why not a circular shape? Let's do an experiment. The issue of circular casing is so clear here. The last few holes are not at all getting any water flow. As the flow progresses, flow rate is getting reduced. This means for a perfect circular cross section, the flow velocity decreases towards the end. That means the runner blades in this region won't get any water flow rate. Look at the case of spiral casing. The flow is looking beautiful, right? Here flow velocity is almost uniform along the length. Here also flow rate is getting reduced along the length, but this is compensated by reduction in area. In short, if you use a spiral casing for a Kaplan turbine, all the runner blades will receive the water flow at the same rate. For huge Kaplan turbines, it's not possible to manufacture the casing as smoothly. Instead, it will look something like this. Now come the guide vanes. Their main purpose is to kill the swirl of the flow and make the flow radial. However, the guide vanes also have one more duty. They can regulate the water flow rate. If the power demand from the consumer side is low, the guide vanes will go for an almost closed angle, reducing the water flow rate. If the power demand is high, the exact opposite is true. The clever engineering of the Kaplan turbine is not over yet. Why are they rotating the blades like this? Suppose the power demand is high and the operator completely opens the guide vanes. Since the flow rate is high, the flow velocity is also high. The runner speed will be maintained, since the frequency of the electricity produced must be constant. Now, let's find out the relative velocity of the fluid. This is the velocity the blade is experiencing. The relative velocity angle has changed drastically. For this new relative velocity, the blade airfoil shape is not at an optimum angle of attack. To make it optimum, the blade must rotate in this direction. Similarly, if the power demand is low, the flow rate must be reduced. In this situation, the new relative velocity angle is as shown. The runner blade must rotate in the opposite direction to be at the optimum angle of attack. You can see the clever mechanism that can rotate all the blades together. When this piston moves, it can spin all the blades at the same angle. Let's hide all the other blades to get a clearer view of the mechanism. If you consider just the runner, that's the main part of the turbine, the flow enters axially and leaves axially. This is why Kaplan turbines are classified as axial flow machines. If you observe the blade of the Kaplan turbine, it's twisted. The reason is again the optimum angle of attack. The blade velocity increases towards the tip. Here again, we need the optimum angle of attack for the relative velocity of water. The way to achieve this is by twisting the blade as shown. 
That's why Kaplan turbines have beautifully twisted blades. After passing through the runner, the water finally escapes through draft tubes. If you don't take proper precautions, a phenomenon called cavitation can occur, and this damages a lot of turbine parts. After the energy extraction from the runner, the pressure of the water is quite low. Sometimes this pressure can go so low that the water will start to boil. These vapor bubbles, when they burst, can damage the turbine blades and even the casing. This is a difficult situation to avoid and is why they increase the area of the draft tube after the runner. This will increase the water pressure. Manufacturers use special blade material to save the runner blades from cavitation. Hi, I hope you enjoyed the video on Kaplan turbines. If you have benefited something out of this video, please do consider us to support us on Patreon. That will be great help for my channel. Take care. Bye-bye.